Okay, so in honor of Justice League coming out this weekend, I know a lot of people already got to see it. Everyone already gets to see it but me, but you know, I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm not freaking out about it. No. <laughs> uh, you know, I can't just, like, go to premieres and shit, you know. I have to live, like, a regular life. <laughs> but I am going to see it Friday. Friday is the day I'm going to see it. So in honor... Of Justice League coming out, I thought I'd talk about my favorite Justice League comic book of all time. And I think I mentioned this before, I probably haven't, probably haven't mentioned this book, but I'm going to talk about it now. That's Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross. I believe Alex Ross did the pencils and Mark Wade wrote it. Winner of five Eisner and Harvey Awards, I don't know what that means, but it's on the book. Includes Best Limited Series and Best Artist. So yeah, definitely Alex Ross did the artwork on this one. But Mark Wade wrote it. I know Mark Wade uh, went on to have a lot of success in like Marvel. I forget if like he wrote Spider-Man. I don't, I don't really read Marvel comics. I don't know uh, what book he was popular for. But I know when he went to Marvel, he got a lot of success. But before then, he was at DC and he was putting out books like this. Uh, Kingdom Come. And if you haven't read the book before, I might as well just explain it. Might as well just explain it. I highly recommend you read this. Obviously, I wouldn't talk about this at all if I didn't think it was worth reading, right? You shouldn't even think about it. You should just go to your nearest comic book store and ask for a Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross. And you should just get the fucking book. Like... You shouldn't even be hesitant about this. You should be reading this right now as I'm talking. But I assume most people are here, at least, are big Justice League fans. And they probably are well aware of this book already. It's a great book. And absolutely none of this is going to happen in the new Justice League film. <laughs> I, I just want to preference that. Like, everything in this Justice League comic book has, like, no relevance for the Justice League movie coming out right now. All right, because this book takes place like in the future, like a little bit like, you know, I forget the exact year, but it takes place like later and the superheroes are old. Superman is old, Wonder Woman is old, uh Green Lantern Hal Jordan, he has like gray hair. Batman has uh white hair. He's like 80 something, you know? All the superheroes are old as fuck in this. And I think Flash is like the saddest one out of all of them. I think it's because, I'll explain it later, but he's like one of the saddest ones. But this whole book, like, fucking changed my whole perception of comic books. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was so good. I couldn't stop thinking about it for, like, after I read it, I just kept thinking about it. And I had to reread it over and over. In my, well, in my humble opinion, it's the greatest Just Sleep book ever written. And it's it's a fairly straightforward story. I mean, I think I might as well just explain it right now. I might as well just explain it. Uh, so, you know, if you don't want spoilers, obviously you should just read the book. But anyway, um, the whole book essentially revolves around Superman and he has retired and he's, you know, he's been isolated. He's been secluded because the, uh, a newer hero, a new hero killed the Joker all right, that's like the catalyst. Okay, a new hero killed the Joker, and the whole all of the public started worshiping the new hero and praising him for doing so because the Joker at this point has killed thousands of people, and they questioned the Justice League why they haven't killed him by now. And as the new hero is confronting Superman, Superman just flies up into the sky and leaves. He retires. He's, he goes into isolation. And that's where we pick up with him at the beginning of the book. Um, later in the book, they go back into the backstory. You see the flashbacks of all this happening, right? But at the beginning of the story, you're a little confused. You're like, wait, he's retired? What happened? Why is he secluded himself? And he does this by making a fucking dome. And it's just the Kent farm in it. And he's just working on a farm. That's what he does in his retirement time. Uh, both his parents are dead at this point, and he's just isolated. And we see Wonder Woman come and try to bring him back 
to the world. Because these new heroes that have replaced the Justice League are... They have no moral compass. All right, so they're just... They're killing people without giving them, like, a second chance. You know what I'm saying? They are... They're brutal and they don't give two fucks. They're dark and edgy. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know what I'm saying? But they have no they have no ideals, you know? So they've replaced all the old heroes, at least with these new heroes, right? So Wonder Woman explains this to him. She tells Superman he's gotta come back and shit. And he's like, fine, but we gotta get the whole Justice League together, you know? And Hal Jordan is literally like living in space in his own fucking like um, like a huge emerald castle that he's constructed from his ring that's always there you know he's like uber powerful it's crazy like his suit is so badass in this book <laughs> and the flash is the and this is the sad part about flash he's trapped in the speed force he can never be uh still so he's always drawn as a blur in the whole book. It's so fucking sad. And every time he talks, it's like the sped up gibberish that you need to like decipher to even figure out what he's trying to say. And he can never be moving at normal speed because he's become so fast beyond every, you know, beyond anybody's imagination and shit like that. It's fucking crazy. And, you know, it's just fucking, it's just sad to see Flash like that. He can't even interact with people anymore. We know how you know, charming and funny Flash could be. But, so he can't even interact with anybody anymore. Wonder Woman can barely understand what he's saying. And Wonder Woman has become brutal. You know, she's become a lot more, uh, tough. You know, she doesn't really give two shits anymore about love or anything. She, she wants to do what's necessary, you know? Because the, because there's like an apocalypse coming. There's like a fucking end of the world day scenario coming that these that the superheroes don't know about but the book actually really at the very beginning starts with an old man and he has this vision and he's taken by the specter which is another comic book character that's related to like how jordan in later books but like so he's taken by a specter you know <laughs> whole different thing but you know he's taken by the specter and the Spectre is taking him through time. Like a Christmas Carol. Have you ever seen a Christmas Carol where the guy is taken through his past, present, and future? That's essentially what happens with this old guy who has a premonition of the future. Of this apocalypse that's going to happen. So he's taken. And and he's shown what the events that are happening right now. You know, everything that's building up to the apocalypse. And they can't affected at all and actually at one point in the book the old man asks the specter like why are you doing this like why am i seeing any of this if i can't have no effect on it you know this is just torture like what are we doing right now and specter's like you'll know later you know like, that's specter's thing like he doesn't give you any fucking straightforward answers he just keeps going you'll know in time <laughs> you'll know in time it's fucking it's, it's he, specter's kind of useless <laughs> But, like, the main story we're following is the Justice League reassembling after being away for years. And Lex Luthor has uh, rounded up all the uh, villains. They're all older now. But they're not villains anymore. They're kind of trying to help society in a way. They're like, you know, they're like business executives at this point. You know, they're really, like, rich people, <laughs> you know. They've made it to the height of their careers and everything. So they're essentially like, you know, CEOs and shit. Not necessarily bad. But Lex Luthor, he's still kind of bad. And guess who's siding with Lex Luthor? Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is there and he's wearing a goddamn metal spine because he's been so fucked up from fighting for the last four, like 40, 50 years. <laughs> like he, his body's just deteriorated. So he has like a metal fucking skeleton on him. And his bat suit's essentially like an armored suit. It's fucking, it's fucking awesome shit. So anyway, Lex Luthor is obviously trying to devise a plan to get rid of all heroes in general. And he's able to have Shazam on his side. <laughs> and 
how he does that is by brainwashing Billy Batson by putting these fucking... This is like the weirdest part of the book. He puts these little fucking worms in Billy Batson's fucking head. And Billy Batson at this point is an adult, so he's not a kid anymore, you know? So he literally looks like Shazam when he's not Shazam. It's a really crazy thing to see because you like is he Shazam right now you don't really realize that until like later in the book like no he's not Shazam yet like he's that's what he looks like because he's older <laughs> at least when I was reading it, it didn't dawn on me like oh shit Billy Batson's no longer a kid anymore like he's 30 something he's not Shazam at all right now that's why he's able to be brainwashed that's why he's you know he has like no willpower you know so he's he's controlling so Lex Luthor's controlling Shazam like that and the Justice League starts trying to convince the world that, you know, uh, these new heroes are not what they want. That they want better heroes for the world. People have, like, better moral compasses and shit. And so the Justice League takes it upon themselves to round up all the heroes and put them in a fucking camp that looks just like the Legion of Doom headquarters. It's fucking crazy dude like they essentially they're essentially putting them in like ca like concentration camps or a gulag but you know one giant prison one giant mega prison and all these heroes are like what the fuck man this is some bullshit man it's a fascism <laughs> you know and superman's like you will stay here until you learn how to be real heroes and it's like his hologram playing the whole time there's some crazy shit happening in this book but of course who's against this idea Batman, <laughs> right? <laughs> Batman is obviously his deepest fears are coming to fruition, right? <laughs> we all know what Batman fears. But anyway, uh, but yeah, but Batman's situation in Gotham, he's literally like made drones and they patrol the whole city of Gotham. He essentially has Gotham under a police state, you know? <laughs> and he's able to control it all from his back cave and Superman tries to convince him to help and then Batman uh, says no, you know, he doesn't want Superman becoming a tyrant. Like we all know this story, right? Like we all know what Batman fears and Superman's becoming it. But Superman, he's really doing it for a, the, the, a good reason. He's trying to, you know, leave the world better than how he found it, right? He's trying to, you know, make better heroes. But, you know, in so, he has to put them all in a mega prison and lock them up. You know, it's just not, <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> but, you know, just to just to save time here, <laughs> just to save a little time, uh, what, what ends up happening is the prisoners uh, revolt, um, the Justice League and the people who side with the Justice League, because there's some new heroes that decide to... They decide to side with the Justice League. So you got those people and then they go against uh, every all the other new heroes that are that think the Justice League are fascists and most of the villains because Lex Luthor is taking that side. Obviously Lex Luthor is going to take the side against Superman. <laughs> Obviously. That's, you know, Lex Luthor is never going to side with Superman <laughs> after everything they've been through. So Shazam is on the side of the new heroes, and they're fighting Superman and the Justice League. And this is like the big climactic moment in the book, and it's a huge battle sequence. And the, the rest of the world, they're not just like being passive. Like the whole United Nations, they're all like, we got to stop this. We, we got to take out these superheroes while they're all concentrating on each other and in one spot. So what do you think they do? They send a goddamn nuke. To nuke that the battle where the superheroes are fighting, they're gonna nuke the fucking battle and take them all out. So the nuke is on its way. The battle is happening and everything, right? And you still got the old guy talking to Spectre this whole time throughout the whole book. He's like, "Why are we witnessing this? I can't. Why can't we do anything?" And the Spectre goes, "You are here to witness." <laughs> and he's like, "Witness what?" He's like, "Judgment." You know, it's just like a really fucking epic shit. This book that's happening in this book, you know, and so everything's going down. Batman's like in, in sky trying to, you know, save lives and shit like that, trying to put an end to the fight. He knows the nukes on his way, so he's trying to stop that shit too. Um, 
but he's too slow. He can't get to it quick enough. And Superman and Shazam are fighting, like, and Superman is trying to convince Shazam to snap out of it because he realizes he's brainwashed. You know, he knows he's brainwashed. So he's like, Billy, I know you're in there. you got to fight this, you know? And Billy's just, he has this fucking real sinister grin on his face the whole time when he's fighting. He's really fucking fucked up, you know? Really, like, <laughs> sinister shit. So they're fighting. Shazam's getting the upper hand on Superman. And he keeps uh, going Shazam to hit him with lightning. But every time Sh Shazam, Billy Batson, every time he says Shazam, he turns back into his mortal form. So every time he says it, he's got to say it again to go back. And while he says it again, there's another lightning that's coming, you know? So it's just like, that's what's... He, that's what he's hitting Superman with. And Superman goes like, enough. And he fucking, in the middle of Billy about to say Shazam and go back into his Shazam form, Superman reaches up and like put, covers his mouth with his hand. You know? <laughs> Covering regular human Billy Batson with his fucking hand. And if you've seen Injustice, you've seen Superman kill Shazam just by like covering his mouth and like putting a laser through his head. So Superman's holding him. And he's like, I need you to fight right now, Billy. Look around. Look what's happening. It's the end of days, you know? You need to you need to help us. You know, I don't want to fight you, Billy. <laughs> and it's really heavy shit. Billy starts, like, crying and shit like that. And Billy's able to snap out of it. He's able to, like, he's able to, you know, he's able to overcome it. But they, but then Superman looks up and he sees the nuke. It's already coming. It's like coming. It's like right there. And Superman's like, I go. <laughs> Superman's like, I, yeah, I have to take care of this. You know, <laughs> I gotta go get it. You know, because no one else is gonna do this. He lets go of Billy and flies up, and Billy, like inspired by Superman, willing to sacrifice himself like that. You know, and he. It, it's, it's what drives Billy out of the brainwashing completely, right? And brings him back. And, like, in the moment, he just looks up and he just, like, he just says Shazam. He turns back into Shazam and flies straight up, grabs Superman by the cape, and throws him back down to the ground. And continues to go towards the nuke. So just Shazam is flying towards the nuke. Superman's been thrown back to the dirt. <laughs> and, you know... It... <laughs> And Billy grabs the nuke and he starts screaming, Shazam, 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 over and over. And lightning just keeps hitting the nuke until it blows up. And then the nuke blows up before it's able to hit them at like ground zero. So, you know, the nuke blows up like in the, in the, in the atmosphere almost. So it's not able to hit where everyone's at, but it still kills everybody that's in the ground zero area. Everyone that's at the, you know... Anybody that's, like, within, like, the impact zone of where the nuke would have been is dead. Like, and the one person that's alive in that zone is Superman. And he's covered in ash and he's screaming towards the sky, you know? Like, it's fucking, it's some heavy fucking shit. So, you know, the nuke goes off. Shazam's able to, like, you know, stop it before it hits, like, its full max potential, you know? You know, because if the nuke actually hit, it would have took out every single hero in the area. But just just exploding at midair like that, it only took out, you know, a, f a few hundred, let's say. Because <laughs> there's, there's hundreds of superheroes and everything, you know. Hundreds of them. They're all fighting and shit like that. And it only takes out the ones that are the closest to the bombs. So a lot of them are saved because of that. And Flash is saving was saving people the whole time and... Wonder Woman and Bruce were saving people the whole time from the blast zone, and it's just a fucking, it's an amazing read. But they end up, like, commemorating, like, Shazam and stuff, Billy Bats and Captain Marvel. They put, like, his cape on the flagpole at the United Nations. Superman, you know, tells the United Nations, he talks with the United Nations, because he gets pissed. Like, Superman, like, literally rips the roof off the United Nations. And he's about to, like, mur kill them all. Because they just sent this nuke and everything. And then, you know, Superman has a revelation. Because Superman, this is the thing I love about Superman. He's not evil at all. And everybody only wants to see an evil Superman. But the core of his character isn't evil at all. Even when he has every reason to kill the United Nations, he doesn't. You know, 
You know, he's he shows them his like full power. He rips the roof off the building. He's about to literally kill them all, and he goes, you know, this is not why I came back. You know, this isn't the reason. You know, then he realizes, you know, I'm not a god. You know, <laughs> and he even says at some point that, um. Actually, I think it's like one of the the UN people say, you know, we saw you as gods, and then Superman goes, we saw ourselves as gods, and we were both wrong. And then he says, we're not going to solve your problems for you anymore, but we're going to help you, you know? And it's like this big fucking, like, moment <laughs> in the end. It's fucking... And they all come around Shazam, who sacrificed himself. They all come around Captain Marvel, who gave his life, right? And, like, just to honor him, we're all going to fucking work together now we're all gonna be one as you know we're all gonna be one world again you know and that's kind of like how the book really ends you know you know they they honor shazam uh batman has like a hospital where he's treating all the people from the blast and everything and and wonder woman starts training the new heroes on themiscara you know all the ones that are willing to be uh the new justice league and you know <laughs> She starts training them and stuff. And the book ends with Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman all meeting up at a goddamn diner. Right? A, a superhero diner where all the waiters are dressed up like superheroes. So, like, the waiters dress up like Superman and stuff. And they're all in their uh, disguises. Bruce Wayne, Diana Prince, Clark Kent, they're all in their disguises and... They're all just talking to each other. They can't believe their disguises still work and stuff. <laughs> but, like, there's a great moment where Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne hug. It's just so, it's so nice. Because, like, Bruce, you can could, you could see Bruce Wayne genuinely feel, like, relief. Like, just the way it's drawn, you can tell that Bruce Wayne is, like, relieved to have his friend back. You know? He's really <laughs> Because he doesn't have any friends. So... You know, it's a, a moment that always, like, tears me up, too. Um, there's a bunch of moments in the book. I mean, Shazam sacrificing himself, that tears me up. The part where they're hugging, that tears me up. Like, it's just such a good book. Um, I know I kind of described the whole book just now. I just, like, fucking kind of told you all the big things that really happened. But there's so many details I skipped over <laughs> because so many things I didn't talk about that you might as well read it anyway. If you're listening to this, I hope you already have read it. Okay. I just wanted to gush about the book a little bit. It's one of my favorite comic books. It's probably the greatest Justice League comic book ever written. Um, and ever drawn. I mean, this is these are beautiful panels. I probably put some of the panels up on this video. So you probably are looking at it right now. I mean, it, it's some beautiful artwork. It's the best looking artwork, you know, in any comic book ever. So, And if you like this book... Um, Alex Ross actually drew another book and wrote it called Justice. And it's just another Justice League story, but it's in their prime and stuff. And it's drawn just like this Kingdom Come book. So, I mean, if you are if you just like the way this book looks, go go ahead and pick up Justice by Alex Ross and read that. Because it's, a, it's, a, it's just more. It's just more. If you want more, it's more. So, yeah, that's that. Um, super excited for the Justice League movie, man. Waiting for it my whole life. And you know, I I always, I just want the movie to succeed really. Because I know at some point, we are going to get Kingdom Come in movie form. If only we can get like five movies down the road. <laughs> like five Justice League movies down the road. We might get Kingdom Come. But you know, a lot of things would have to go right. A lot of things would have to go right for that to work. And for it to happen. And it, Kingdom Come might only ever be in comic book form. I hope one day they make an animated film. I don't know what the fuck they're waiting for on that. Just make the goddamn animated film already. Uh, they actually made a good motion comic that has good voice acting and some good uh, sound effects and stuff. Um, it's on YouTube. I, I'll put the link in the description for that. So if you're like too lazy to read the book, just fucking sit there and watch the goddamn motion comic. You know, with the voice acting and everything. It's great. I sometimes uh, put it on sometimes. I mean, it's been a while since I watched it. It's been a while since I read the book, actually. I need to reread the book. 
It's actually been a like a year, a couple years. It's actually been a couple years since I actually read this all the way through. But it all sticks with you, you know? The whole book just sticks with you. Like, I was never, I'm able to remember everything, you know? And it's been a while since I've read the book. When I first read it, I, like, read it multiple times. Like, I read it, and then I reread it, like, immediately. And then, like, a week later, I reread it again, you know? I just kept coming back to it. But, you know, that was a few years ago. I've read many comic books since, but this is the one that made me... Like, want to keep reading comic books because I like this showed the potential of the medium, you know. So, how it shows how great comic books are and what you know it could do that no other medium, no other form of entertainment can do. So, definitely give it a shot, okay, if you haven't already. Um, that's it for now. Uh, what y'all think of the book? If you ever want to talk about the book, just come to this comment section and start commenting away. I'll respond. I'll talk about this book all fucking day. Alright? Let me know what you think of it. Uh, probably be after Justice League. It'll probably be my Justice League spoiler review. I'm going to do a Justice League uh, non-spoiler review by myself. You know, just basic shit. I'm not going to give away anything. Because some people on this channel uh, live in areas where the movie doesn't come out for like another week. So... Gonna try to be respectful on that. Try to spoil them on that. Uh, to my best I can. It'll probably be like a short, like, five-minute video. Just me, like, going, this is awesome. And it's like, it'll, you know, <laughs> that'll be the whole video. But And I'll be doing my spoiler review possibly with another person, you know. Maybe get, like, a little podcast thing happening. Captain Ramsey. You, if you might have seen him commenting on here. Uh, I started talking with him. We, we might just end up doing a podcast. Uh, about Justice League and stuff, you know? About this goddamn movie. Get his opinions. As well as mine, you know? Try to, like, you know, get even distribution of ideas. <laughs> so, look forward to that. Look forward to that for sure. Alright, so, I'll see you all there. Alright, bye-bye.